Bobatelli here on uh, Thursday, the 13th, a very pretty a day today, uh, and coming up with your weekly e-blast. Hope you're able to get outside and be able to kind of see the glory of God reflecting off these uh, leaves. It's really, a, it's a pretty place. Connecticut is really a, a great place if you like a diversity of climates. And, uh, you know, we got mountains on one side and you drive an hour the other way, you're, you're right at the beach. It's, it's a pretty amazing place. So praise God that we have the benefit of living in a place like this. Although I'm not big on the winter. Anyway, um, so I've got a couple of things to talk about. First of all, no uh, additional news about the elevator. We're still waiting for parts coming in July and potential uh, repairs beginning in August. No additional news also about the, um, as the <laughs> surveyor turned over the, the final copy to the land use attorney who then turned it into the town. We have no updates for you on that, but that's coming soon. And just a reminder that it goes all the way back to uh, 2018, 19, when we uh, had some folks make a determination that the amount of work needed to be done on the house, which has been called the Sexton's house, that that, <clears throat> that was a very large amount of money that we did not have the ability to do. And so any additional problems with the house become a liability for us. So um, we're coming pretty close to making decisions about that, which you will continually stay on top of you with. Also, let's uh, let you know, speaking of uh, keeping things up in front, for uh, the last three years, we've been talking with uh, Paula and the uh, uh, CWT about trying to figure out a way to have a space for the CWT group, which involves often uh, somebody at the piano, a bass player, two guitar players, three or more vocalists, they get spread out all over the place. If you've ever been here, you know, some Sundays, uh, if it's just a CWT, they might be up in the choir box, but then their instrumentalists are way down here, which makes it really hard to coordinate. And at the same time, uh, on the blended Sundays, we have Sundays where the choir is nicely up there in their little space out of the way, but the CWT has got to scramble for space down on the floor so we've been talking for at least three years now about what's a configuration where we, which we could have in the church where we could have a, a dedicated space for the CWT so it wouldn't they wouldn't be you know standing on top and, and of each other. And when you come forward for communion, you know, you wouldn't have to be, you know, partially a guitar player for a little bit as you walk through. So at some point, I'm pretty sure at some point we're gonna end up moving the piano. Uh, and we'll probably remove a pew. I think that's part of the discussion. And we'll replace that with chairs, nice chairs like we have in the choir loft for the Sunday. So we, we're not going to lose any space, per se, in terms of like seating. Uh, but we would have a space where uh, the, all of those instrumentalists and singers uh, could be able to make it be a, little, a lot easier for everybody. The only reason I tell you that is that uh, you may or may not know that anything you look at over time in worship becomes part of your worship. So we start making changes to things. You know, people get a little like, uh, like, wow, what just happened? I'm just letting you know, just uh, I don't think there's anything imminent. I haven't seen anybody with uh, any tools going into the church. So I, I don't think any final decisions have been made. But I wouldn't be you know, surprised if we make a couple of little changes. The other thing is really helpful about this is that if you had a space where there were chairs, you can remove a chair and a person who's in a wheelchair doesn't have to like sit in the back or somehow get up out of the wheelchair uh, to get into a pew and then you have someone help them get back into a wheelchair. So actually this discussion also involves uh, making things accessible for folks who, uh, who you know may need some additional space like wheelchair space, so anyway. So all that aside, so here, here here's what's coming up. Uh, this Saturday, 10 o'clock, we have our um, our four bike mechanics coming into the parking lot. And we're really hoping to see all kinds of members from the town and uh, Simsbury uh, come, and you. And you can come and just uh, see who comes. You can come and meet people. This is a soft invite for people to come um, to our property. It's not as hard to invite people to come in to, to have their bikes fixed and bring their kids' bikes and get them all tuned up for summer. That's a really easy invite. 
And that's different than inviting people to church, which we really struggle to do. Um, and so anyway, it's just a really way to minister and bless the community, the wider community. And, you know, we just, when we show up, like if you show up, you say, I don't have a bike, I don't, uh, I don't ride a bike, what, why would I come? You come because you're the, you're the church community. You come because then you can just say good morning and uh, you can just see what happens. You come for 20 minutes, that's all you need to do. But we try to, to, to kind of really connect with people in our community and this is one of the ways we're gonna bless them. So that's coming up on this Saturday, the 15th. <clears throat> Sunday, I really hope that you come to church this Sunday uh, because there's just a lot of really big stuff to talk about in the scriptures. Last week, I got a lot of feedback about this thing about, therefore, we do not lose heart. You know, that they, that what we go through now, which Paul calls slight momentary uh, afflictions, that these are preparing us for something to come, which is an eternal weight of glory. Uh, so this week, we're going to, we're extending that because of the, the next scripture. And we have some, man, some really powerful stuff that uh, most people have a like a foggy idea about, like what happens when you die? I mean, what happens when you die? I talk to people all, you know, like people talk to me as a minister, you know, all the time about you know, making preparations for, oh, my brother died or somebody in my family died. And, you know, so I, I'm at these events a lot. I hear all kinds of stories. Oh, we become angels. Um, oh, the soul sleeps in the grave until the return of Jesus. That, I don't hear that one as much anymore. I hear people talk about this is it, this is all there is, and so we live, and uh, we just make the most of it, which is really easy for people in their 30s and 40s and 20s, 30s and 40s to talk about, but a lot different when those people hit 60. Uh, they start to start to see things a lot differently, you know, as the time approaches. And so coming up this week, you know, here's just part of the reading here. It says it says um. So whether we are at home or away, meaning we are here present in these bodies or away in the presence of the Lord, we make it our aim to please him. That's our ambition. We want to please God. And then this line, for we must all, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each may receive recompense for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. And then he says, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. Powerful stuff. So that's part of the message uh, uh, at the 8 and the 9.15. Following the 9.15, we have three more of this kind of introduction to this book by Henry Blackaby. You know, people can read scriptures, but never know and experience how to follow God day to day. Like when you wake up in the morning and when you're driving to the store and when you're going to work or you're dealing with your kids. We generally kind of make that an additional piece, maybe for missionaries or maybe if we're really in trouble. But God has made us and made this relationship through Christ that we may walk with him. So how does God communicate with us? Uh, is it just always like a, I had a vision? No. So this book about that Blackaby has written, again, I, I tell people, it's not, it's not like a Steinbeck novel. You know, it's not John Grisham. But the dude is on to it. Uh, and I found this to be true. And this book is one I've read years ago and uh, have found this to be one of the most consistently applicable books to my to living my Christian life. So Amanda and I took a look at all the videos again. We reappraised what we did on Sunday. And we're going to do things differently because we're going to get in the next just three more weeks before the break. We got to get to the heart of the matter. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to do like a 10 minute presentation and followed by a discussion. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm suggesting you come and find out what I'm talking about. Uh, and then, because I think it should be of great interest to anyone who is uh, interested in really living out the Christian life. So um, that's coming up after church on Sunday. Uh, and um, the following Saturday, uh, we have a follow another follow-up, a follow-up to our first uh, kind of worship retreat. This next piece is not a retreat per se, but we are taking a dedicated time of worship to help us continue to learn and experience what it means to interact with God in worship. 
It was very powerful. It's not just an emotional event, but it's 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 like people get God confirms His very presence to people in worship, and then we turn and we pour out our hearts to Him, uh, and it, it that it's a very powerful thing. And so we're we're working on that uh, together as a church. I know that everybody isn't going to come to this, but I think you may want to come to this. So this, uh, I'm just making that invitation. This is for everybody and anybody who's interested. That will be a week from Saturday, the 22nd, uh, at uh, 10 in the morning. And uh, I think I said 10 to 11.30. I don't know exactly if we'll go all the way for an hour and a half, but it's not like going to a church service where you come and you sit quietly and you participate and you sing parts of a hymn and then you go home. This is a very interactive thing where we really, um, I don't think you want to miss it. If, if God's going to be showing up to these things, I don't think you want to miss that. So that's coming up on the 22nd. We can invite, just invite you to come. Come and see, as Jesus said. All right. Uh, so we continue to ask God to be with our church, to empower us to be the people he's called us to be, and to bless us with his holy presence and to make us and to be the people he's called us to be. So God bless you. And I look forward to, to seeing you this weekend.